Okay, so we have a Platinum 4 Fiddlesticks 1 trick playing jungle. The first thing I say in the beginning of every single game, you have to look at the matchups. So which lane do we want to play around this game? I see a Mundo Casante top lane with both Ghost Teleport. And the first thing I'm thinking is that's not something I want to put a lot of resources into. I would 100% play around bot and mid this game. Get that Syndra and Lucian fed. This Mundo is not gonna win us the game. He's gonna be strong no matter what. So I would 100% play around bot and mid this game. And what do we want to do when we play around bot or mid? We start top. Because if we start top, we path towards bot. And we will have more resources to put into the bot lane. Like, this is a bit risky, but it doesn't seem like anyone is here, so I'll take it. But this is not something I would do consistently when I'm playing, because this is a big risk, and we're not necessarily getting a lot from it. So, the first thing that happened, we see Kisante top, we see Vex mid. Now we're actually starting inside his jungle, so we know for a fact that he's starting blue. But if we didn't start here, if we started our blue, we would still know 100% that Lee Sin started his blue this game, because we have a ward here, so he hasn't taken our red. And bot lane arrived late, which means they leashed. Mid was there immediately, top was there immediately, so we know for a fact Lee Sin started bot. And now we can use that to our advantage to track him easier. And this Lee Sin is probably not gonna realize that you have been taking his top side camp because what i know they don't have any vision here and we can use that to our advantage uh so I, we would want to take three camps here to hit level three and then we have two choices we can go into our blue side to play safe or we can go into our red side to prevent lee sin from getting any more camps but we actually give away vision and this is not good this was a big mistake so right now lee sin doesn't know that we're here lee sin has no idea that we're taking his entire camp but here they get vision or not. This is a big mistake. A big one. This might not seem like a lot. But we know Lee Sin has a little bit slower clear than Fiddlesticks. So he's probably starting wolves right now. But he sees us here. Which means he knows that this is gonna be gone. So he's probably gonna go into our red side. But if we didn't give away vision here. He would not know we were here. So we would probably keep pathing towards wolves. And realize oh shit my camps are gone. And waste a lot of time. But just because we gave away vision on ourselves here. He now knows that we took his top side jungle. And it's a really easy way to prevent this. All you have to do is look at your minion wave. Because their minion wave is gonna be at the same place right. So when your minion waves passes this little entry here their minion ways is also gonna pass this entrance you can also look at your bot if that's easier for you and you, you see here how much vision you get you get vision all the way over here so when the minions are here you have to already have passed this side here and uh, taking the crux in the shadow of war or we could have waited a little bit until the minions passed and then taking the crux because now we're giving away our position uh, for no reason which is a very bad thing to do uh, so now Lee Sin is gonna be able to react to this, which is bad. So we lost our tempo advantage now. Now it's gonna be even again. So we got a big tempo advantage from taking his camps, but he's gonna go into our red side now. Or invade us at our blue, if he's good. But I, you should always expect the enemy to be good, because if they're bad, you're go still gonna win the game. So you have to expect your enemy to be good. So he's probably going into your red side here, is what I'm guessing. But we're field sticks, so we want to keep clearing. No? Okay, so he's invading us. Every time this happens, the first thing you have to look at is the wave states. So first, let's look at mid. Syndra has a small push advantage. Mundo as well. So not a big one, but a small one. So now we have to... We have to watch the minimap closely and see, are we gonna get help from our laners? Are they rotating? If so, we can contest this. But if the laners are not rotating, we have to play it safe and can't go too greedy. And we can't just all in and expect our laners to rotate. You can never expect your laners to do anything. You have to react to what they're actually doing. So every time this happens, you get invaded, look at your waves. Are they gonna rotate or not? So we see Mundo is coming. This means we can contest this now. Because Mundo is gonna get here faster than Kesante every single time. So if we can just survive long enough for Mundo to come, this is gonna be a free kill on this in. And we have Flash. So I think you should be able to do this. So, why didn't we Flash? If Lee Sin, when he hits his second Q, after that you Flash over the wall. If you stand here, Look, he cues you right. And as soon as he dashes, you can just stand here next to the wall. As soon as he dashes, you flash over to here. If he has quick enough reactions, he might follow you. But then at least Mundo is gonna kill him. But now we just stood and let him kill us for no reason. And we even got the help from a laner. 
So we just hug the wall here. As soon as he uses his Q, we either use the flash to dodge the Q, preferably, but that's not always viable when we're in close quarters. But as soon as he uses the second part of his Q, we just flash over here. Then he might follow you and get the kill, but then at least Mundo is gonna kill him as well. So then it's at least a one for one. But now he might actually make it out, because he can war jump and Mundo doesn't have any dashes. Uh, so this, we should have 100% flashed over the wall here. And it would have been a free kill for Mundo. And maybe you could have even lived. Because now Mundo dies as well. Okay, no, he lives. He traded a one for one. But this could have gone a lot better. Uh, so we've done a couple of mistakes so far. We gave vision for no reason, top side. And uh, we did not use our summoners when we could have to uh, grant us an advantage. Uh, but not the end of the world. We are a little bit behind now. Lee Sin has two kills, which means we have to adapt to this. We can no longer contest Lee Sin on things. At least not in a 1v1. So now our main goal is try to get level 6 as fast as possible. Because that is the strength of Fiddlesticks. Try to get level 6. You see Lee Sin getting another kill mid. So this Lee Sin is gonna be a menace to deal with. So at this point, Lee Sin has 3 0. No, he's 3 1. And you are 0 1. So now we want to avoid Lee Sin at all costs, or he's just gonna kill us. And the best way to do that is to buy defensive, or buy a pink ward, use it defensively, and use your effigies defensively as, as well, by the entrances to your jungle. Okay, this is good. We see Lee Sin bot, and you're doing something about it. You're taking his topside jungle. So this is good. Every time you see the enemy doing something on the opposite side of the map, like there's no way you're gonna make it in time to help bot, right? So the only thing you can do is do something else. And in this case, Taking his camp are great. And then we can do Void Grubs and Rift Scuttle as well. Okay, so we see them fighting here, so we react to it. Good map awareness, Flash Fear, free kill. Help him crash the wave, that's great. And now I want you to do this, Scuttle Crab and Void Grubs. Void Grubs are pretty great to take early game because they give a lot of XP. Look at this, we're taking two camps at once. This is what I call efficiency. Okay, so Lee Sin is coming here. He is ahead a lot when it comes to gold. But he's actually level 4, which I have no idea how a 4-1 Lee Sin managed to be level 4 uh, after 6 minutes. But we see Mundo wanting to recall, Cassante teleporting back. Every time you get contested, you have to look at the waves. Pretty even mid, but Ari is level 5, so I would say Vex has the prio mid. So now the only question is, can we beat Lee Sin in, one of, in a 1v1? One one? It might be possible with your life drain on so many minions, but I would probably think this fight is in Lee Sin's favor. Let's see what happens. So you get the Skull Crab. So we see no one is rotating. So now we have two choices. We either run away or kill him in a 1v1. But we don't have Flash. So it might be difficult. And you hit level 6. Oh wow. Got hit by the Vexel. No way she lives that. Okay, that's just unlucky. Okay, Mundo got her. But the good thing is, because your efficiency, you managed to take so many camps at the same time and took his top side, you got two levels ahead of Lee Sin, and you turned a very bad game into a decent one. So this was very well, well played. Thanks to your efficiency, you managed to gap a Lee Sin which was 4-1, just because you were two levels ahead of him. And he even flashed as well. So that was very good. This is why it's so important to be efficient in the jungle. Because even if they get a lot of kills, levels are way more important in the early game. And now we're level 6, but our ultimate is on cooldown. So right now, I would want to full clear into to waiting until our ultimate is back. Because that's the bread and butter of fiddlesticks. And then we can look to contest something. And that could be Drake. It could be a gank. It could be a lot of things. You're pretty efficient with your clearing, which is very good. You're doing the camps in the right order. You're taking uh, multiple camps at the same time. Here, I see uh, Scully Crab respawning soon. But you want to look for a gank top. And I think this might be possible. The only problem I have with this is we're putting a lot of resources into this top lane. This Mundo is getting a lot of our resources. I mean, it's never bad to get a free kill. So this was, this was a good gank. It was a good gank. But here, why don't we do Scuttle Crab here? Because we saw Lee Sin mid. He was moving into his jungle. So we have two choices here. Either go contest Lee Sin in his own jungle, which I would not recommend without your ultimate. 
Or we just take Skull Crab, which is free. Like, this is a big risk. Sure, it might pay, uh, pay off, but it might also be a disaster. But this Skull Crab, you're always gonna get something for this Skull Crab. This is 100% guaranteed gonna be something you can get out of it. Invading Lee Sin is not. So I would do Skull Crab here. Because we know Lee Sin is here somewhere. He's probably on red right now and gonna come towards your crux. I would have gone for the Skull Crab here. We saw the queue over the wall. You managed to get it without him uh, interrupting you. But still, Skull Crab is still there. Yeah. Okay, so this, this is what I mean. We took a very high risk play that had a very low reward instead of a non-existent risk play that had a low reward. So the reward is the same, but your play is high risk. And if you did Skull Crab, it would have been non-existent risk. It wouldn't have been a risk at all. And I, I'm i pretty sure 90% of games that the Skull Crab here is going to be more beneficial than invading a Fed Lee Sin without your ultimate. And I've gone through this in previous coaching sessions as well. When you respawn and get back to lane, you always want to go through these gates. Even if you want to go for Crux, you want to go here. Here you get locked to just bot lane. You can only react to bot lane if you take this path. But if you take this path, you can react to both mid and bot lane. So always go through the gate when you get back from base and walk back to your jungle. It's a good habit to imprint in your brain. Every time you respawn in base, go through the gates. Okay, so now our ultimate is back. We see Lee Sin is on Void Grubs. So Drake is respawning in a long time. Lee Sin just did Void Grubs. There's no objectives up right now. And you're using the information that you got from Void Grubs. This is great. I love this. This is the second time you're doing it. And it's great. Every time you get information on Lee Sin, you have to use that information for your advantage. So when you saw him ganking bot, you took his entire top side jungle, gave you a two item level lead, which gave you a skull crab, you got void grubs, and I think you got your, you didn't get it yourself, but your team got like two, three kills or something. And now again, we got a notification that Lee Sin it, did void grubs. So we know for a fact Lee Sin is top side. What do we do then? We have to punish him on your side of the map. And in this case, this is the perfect choice to do go into his camps and take his bot side jungle. This might also lead into a free double kill bot, but we see Lucian is in lane, so we have to wait for our bot lane to get back because we want to wait. We see Syndra coming as well, so this should be a free kill. Okay, we get, we're at least getting Lux. We're probably getting Kai's as well. Nice, okay, big. We got information on Lee Sin. Because he did void grubs. And you use that information to get a grump and a double kill. 10 out of 10. This is what we want to do every single time. Every time we see the enemy jungler doing something, we want to punish them. Every single time. And you've done it so far. This is great. This is, pro this is not a lot of people who do this, but you're doing it very well. Like you're up 30 CS on this Lee Sin. He's up 4 kills though. So we have a bit of a bad thing when it comes to uh, assessing the risk of certain plays. Weakness so far is assessing the risk of plays. We're taking way ris way too risky plays instead of doing plays with the same amount of reward but less risk. But you're very good at using what is it called like information you get on this in and punishing for it. And you're pathing very well. Your pathing is almost flawless and your efficiency is very good, which leads to this two item level lead on Lee Sin, even though he has 1k gold up on you, just because your pathing and your efficiency, you're two levels up on Lee Sin. Now you get vexulted, try to get a fuck away from here. There's no way you guys win this fight. You don't have flash. Let's just pray to God. Okay, so at least we got a flash from it. At least we got a flash from it. Okay, so here, I'm guessing you're looking for this bot lane. But what I would have done here, probably, like we have two people bot, they're almost killing tower, and they're both full HP, and we only have one camp bot side. I would go top side here. I would 100% go top side, look if Skull Crab is still up, or if I can prevent a tower dive on the mid. But the only choice we have here is Crux. We're not gonna be able to 2v1 this. And we have one camp. Top, we have three camps. Three camps we can do top. And a potential tower dive we can protect. So I don't think going for Krux here is very efficient. Uh, it doesn't open up a lot of flexibility. I would 100% recommend going top side here. There's so much more to do top side than there is top side right now. 
I think you're wasting a lot of momentum. And this is this is what I'm talking about. You're taking way too risky plays. Like, if you had some teammates here to back you up, that would be great. But you don't. If they were half HP, that would be great. But they are full HP. Okay, but you're a fucking Giga Chad. And you managed to get the double kill anyways. But that's not the point. This is not the point I want to make. Like, sure, this can work. This can work. But a lot of times, this doesn't work. A lot of times, they have a ward in the bush. Or they flash. Whatever. This is uh, Emerald... No, Platinum 4, right? So this time, it worked out. But it's not a consistent play to make. To try to 1v2 the bot lane... When they're full HP. If they have like 70 or like half HP. That would have been. The risk would have been lower. The reward would have been the same. But the risk would have been lower. Or if you had like a Lulu or something to back you up. You know there's something. Something. Now this worked out. But next game it might not work out. So I would still not go bot here. Even after I see the double kill. I mean it's great that it did work out. This game. But I don't see this working out every single game. This is kind of a coin flip. And I hate coin flips. If you want to consistently climb in League of Legends, you should not be coin flipping. Uh, but yes, okay, it turned out this time. But I don't see this working out every single time. Especially not when you get to higher elos. You know, when you start hitting Diamond, you start hitting Master, maybe even Grandmaster. Then it's not gonna be that easy. And we need to play like the enemy is good. If we can only beat bad people, we are never gonna climb. We need to be able to beat good people. Okay, so we see Drake here. We go for it. We see Kisante top and Vex mid. So we have information on two people, but three people is still missing. So this might have might have to cancel this if they come and contest. But we have good vision thanks to Lulu, so this should be fine. See bot lane coming here, so we need to get the fuck out of here. We're leaving the Lulu. She flashes. It's fine. Yeah, be just because of Hex Flash, that was actually a good play to make. Because worst case scenario, we just Hex Flash over the wall. But if you didn't have Hex Flash, that would have been pretty risky. But you, you're, once again, you're abusing your strengths. That is good. Good, great call. Now we want to clear until our ultimate's back up. We have a lot of gold as well. So I might, I might want to, if we can hit a big item here, I would say that we need to recall before Herald. So we want to do blue, Skull Crab, and Grump. Reset to get a power spike. And then we can use the power spike to try to get a kill or just straight up hard force herald with our power spike. So you're actually even in level to this Kisante, which is great as a jungler. If you can be on the same level as the top laner, that is great. Okay, so we clear the vision and then we ult in. I think we should win this, right? No, we don't. He's still very fed. Okay, but I have one thing to say about this. Contesting herald here is not the wrong thing. The wrong thing is not recalling and abusing your power spikes. You have 1.7 thousand gold in your pocket right now. That is a lot of gold. I want you to reset, use that gold and then fight when you're strong and you have your items. Because this is basically just 1,700 gold just wasted because you haven't bought anything for it. If we did Skull Crab and then gr uh, Grump recalled, we could have probably bought something nice. You would be way stronger. And then you could get back. And you would have probably won this fight then. Because you would be way stronger than you are now. Because you have so much gold in your back. In your pocket that you haven't used yet. So it's a lot of wasted potential. Okay so respawning. Once again I want to go through the gates. Or actually now we have the hex gates. Which is even better. As long as every time we have the hex gates. We want to go through these things. Because they are even better than uh, these gates over here. Okay but once again I can see. I can see you like to fight. But... This is not the right call again. Once again. Once again. This might work out. This might work out great. But it's not a consistent call to make. You don't even have your ultimate. Why are we going top here? Like we see a Mundo fighting a Lee Sin. There's one camp here. And a Kassante nearby. If you had your ult this might be good. So you can help Mundo. But still. Once again. I would go bot here. I would take the Hexgate bot. So we go here. We get Krugs. Red. Raptors. We hit 11. We get our ultimate. And then we fight when we're strong. There's no reason to fight when we're weak. We want to get strong and then fight. Not fight and then get strong. So always get strong first. And then abuse your strength by fighting. If they don't want to fight. You just force an objective. I think you're looking way too much at the, at the champion icons on the minimap. If you had your ultimate. This would have been another story. But now we go top without our ultimate. 
We're still level 10. One camp we could be 11. That's a huge power spike for Fiddlesticks. Level 11 is very important. So now we're just wasting time. We could have done three camps instead of one. So now we basically lost two camps in tempo. Just because we went top here. So I would have gone bot. Took three camps. Hit level 11. Then when the ultimate is back up. Then we can look for a fight. You don't want to waste too much time setting up plays. Especially not when you have camps up. But now we see something happening. Now we see Lee Sin bot. Now we should drop these camps. And go bot here. We should definitely drop these camps. Because now something has actually happened that we have to react to. So we are farming when we should not be farming. And when we should be farming, we're looking for picks. So this Lee Sin could have been dead like five years ago. I, we're still gonna get him. Where are we? But now we turned a free kill into two deaths. You should have 100% dropped red buff here. Gone straight for bot. It would have been a free kill on Lee Sin. Because you have a point and click fear that he can't dodge. It's literally impossible to dodge a point and click fear. And just kill him. So we turned a free kill into two deaths instead. And now we might not even get him. Yeah, so this, this was also a big mistake. This was your fault. I don't want to be rude. I, I'm just trying to be educational here. You could have gotten a free kill on Lee Sin. But instead they got three kills on you. Because of a red buff. So a red buff cost you four kills effectively. Because you lost one and they gained three. You lost one and they gained three. So it's effective four kills that we lost just from doing a red buff. So quite a big mistake if you do ask me. Now, we're starting to near the mid game. Now we want to start playing more around objectives. Now you hit level 11. After you hit level 11, you're gonna start prioritizing objectives more than jungle camps. And when we hit level 16, we are only gonna prioritize objectives. The normal camps are basically useless after level 16. Level 16 is objectives, scuttle crabs and buffs. We don't care about Krugs, Gromp, Raptors, Wolves after level 16. But now we want to start prioritizing the objectives a little bit more. And we see Drake is spawning in 20 seconds. And uh, I see you're also pinging it. So I like the way you think. And we see Kai'Sa bot here. We see Kai'Sa bot here. So this should be a free pick. That we could turn into Drake. You see they are baiting. Nice drop by a ward. Very well played. This is beautiful. The, you basically gave your team a free Drake right now. Free kill. Rotate into Drake. We see them trying to contest this. But I'm pretty sure they can't contest this. Mundo has teleport as well. We got a kill on Lux. Okay so now we just got another free kill for some reason. Okay so. Wait. How did Lucian die? No, 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 no. How did Lucian die? Oh, was it Lee? But there's no way he dealt that much damage to two people that quickly. Okay, but we see a teleport here. We see a teleport here. Right now, it's a 2v2. It's gonna turn into a 2v3. And your ultimate is down. I'm pretty sure we don't win this. After the double kill here from Lee Sin, I would try to get the fuck out of here. Lee Sin also managed to get level 13 somehow. You went two levels up on him. The entire game. And now all of a sudden, he's two levels up on you. What the fuck just happened? But, yeah, I think we get the fuck out of here. I don't think we have a lot of choice. It's a Mundo is going in, but this Lee Sin is cracked. Yeah, there's no way we win this. It's way too greedy to stay here. Once again, like, I know, I know it's very hard to do quick calls like this. But this is something everyone has to practice. To do these quick calls. As soon as we see the double kill by Lee Sin... We should realize, okay, this is doomed. We have to back out. Instead, we try to keep fighting. And it got both you and... Yeah, both you and Lulu get killed there. As soon as Lee Sin gets a double kill, dip the fuck out. Just leave everyone. This this is never gonna go well. Okay, now we're protecting mid. That's good. Our team are, is down, so we have to protect the lanes. Preferably, we want to take jungle camps when we're jungling. But when... Your laners are dead, or someone is just leaving a camp. We have to take it. And now you, you're gonna die here. Take the hex gate here. Get the fuck out of here. Like, if we look at the minimap, they are getting some uh, help here. Yeah, you get. Hit what? Okay, do we get it? Okay. I mean, it kind of worked out. I would have probably left sooner. Because if mid and top rotate, you would have been dead so hard. Uh, but now we just try to do our best to play around objectives. We're behind by a lot. They are like 7k gold up on us. 
So at this point, I will just play safe, get as many camps as you can before Lee Sin steals it, and try to counter gank with your uh, ultimate. Because if you can get one good ultimate after they have engaged, you can get a lot of bounties. We see 500 gold bounty on Bisonte, 150 on Lee Sin, and 150 on uh, Vix. Yes, we get an ult on Lee. He's very fed though, so it's gonna be difficult to kill him. Oh yeah, but I think I think this is gonna be a loss. I don't think like there are 10k gold up on you guys. Like I don't think you can get back from this. Uh, so the good things you did this game, what you cleared very effectively, and you tracked Lee Sin and punished him when he did mistakes. Very good. I, I think you can make that two things, actually. Two things you did very well. Keep doing that, keep clearing that effectively, and keep punishing the enemy jungler as soon as they show themselves or gank. Uh, what we did wrong was we gave away a lot of information for free. Uh, and I'm talking about showing where you don't have to show. Level 2 at Crux, you showed yourself to the minion wave. Very bad. It, it caused you to die as well when Lee Sin invaded. You could have played it a little bit better if you flashed over the wall and uh, got help from Mundo. But I think the biggest mistake that you do, and you did it a lot of times this game, is that you take way too risky plays. So when you respawn, I feel like the first thing you look at is where all the enemies are. Where are all the enemies? And where can I get the most kills? That's what I feel like you're thinking. And that's the wrong way to think about it. You should think, where can I get the most resources from right now? And am I strong enough to fight right now? Do I have everything up? Do I have my ultimate? Do I have a power spike? Do I have flash? If so, then you could look for a play. But otherwise, if you don't, if your ultimate is on cooldown, you don't have flash, you're lacking like 500 gold to your next item. Go and clear, take the Skullcrab, Crab, take a couple of camps, hit level 11, and then fight after you hit your power spike. Hit level 11, get that item. Wait for your ultimate to get back on cooldown, and then you can fight. <laughs>